Hello, my name is Kelly Fischler, and this is my project on medical conditions for Medical Terminology 101. The first medical condition is a tension pneumothorax. There's a word root, a combining vowel, and a suffix, which means that there is air in the chest cavity. When a patient experiences a pneumothorax, it is often because of trauma to the lung, such as an open chest wound, drugs, smoking, lung disease, or other factors. There are two types of pneumothorax, simple and tension, and within those two are also open and closed pneumothorax. Attention pneumothorax means there is air in the chest pleural space where the lung itself usually resides. Air continues to build inside the pleural space because a hole is preventing the organ from being able to exhale. Pathology. Tension pneumothorax is a life-threatening condition that can occur as a result of trauma, lung infection, or medical procedures, such as high-pressure mechanical ventilation, chest compression during CPR, or thoracoscopy. In contrast to traumatic pneumothorax and spontaneous pneumothorax, in tension pneumothorax, the air becomes trapped in the pleural space and cannot escape. As a result, with each breath the patient inhales, air and pressure accumulate within the chest. When the lung on the affected side of the chest collapses, the heart, blood, vessels, and airways are pushed to the center of the chest, thereby compressing the other lung. This leads to decreases in blood pressure, consciousness, and breathing that may in turn lead to shock and death. <laughs> Diagnosis. A good physical examination is the key to knowing your patient has a tension pneumothorax. You can expect them to show signs of hypotension, hypoxia, chest pain, and difficulty breathing. You will not hear any breath sounds on the affected side, and jugular venous dis distension shown above, and tachycardia may be present as well. Treatment. Treatment is the immediate needle decompression by inserting a large bore out of 14 or 16 gauge needle into the second intercostal space in the mid-clavicular line. Wherever you present that, because needle decompression causes a simple pneumothorax, a tube thoracostomy should be done immediately afterwards. A thoracostomy is when a thin tube is inserted in between the lungs and the chest wall to allow excess air or fluid to be continuously removed. Most tension pneumothorax patients are encountered in emergency rooms and are treated by ER doctors, physician's assistants, and some nurse practitioners, although very much of all medicine and combat related. There aren't always medics in the field who are close enough to treat these, so your battle buddy will likely be the man saving your life. The military has now included field-tested chest tubes for treating collapsed lungs in medical kits. They are one of the most prominent field wounds recorded in the last 15 years. Our next condition is Bartholin adenitis. That word is comprised of a word root and a suffix, which means inflammation of the gland. The associated anatomy and pathology. Bartholin adenitis mainly affects the Bartholin glands of the labia and the vagina. Adenitis occurs when one of the glands becomes either infected or experiences trauma. Bartholin abscesses occur from either the primary gland infection or an infected cyst. Bartholin cysts are usually 1 to 3 centimeters in size. When this happens, the gland is unable to secrete its lubricant around the outer area of the vagina, and in some cases, Bartholin abscesses may cause painful intercourse. Diagnosis and treatment. If a patient presents a possible Bartholin cyst or adenitis, their doctor will ask them questions about their medical history in reference to intercourse and the possibility of sexually transmitted infections or diseases. They will also perform a pelvic exam, test a sample of the vaginal fluid, or recommend a biopsy if a mass is present. If cancer is a concern, they may also refer to the patient to see a gynecological oncologist. If it is not, the doctor may drain the cyst, use marsupialization, or simply leave it, to, leave it be to shrink on its own. If an abscess develops, the patient will most likely be prescribed an antibiotic. Some women will that have a history of recurring cysts don't respond well to therapies, and their doctor may re recommend a gland excision. Our third medical condition is hysterorexis, comprised of a word root, a combining vowel, and a suffix, which means rupture of the uterus, pathology, and associated anatomy. Hysterorexis is commonly called uterine rupture 
It happens during some pregnancies and most often during early labor. A rupture of the uterus can be incomplete where the peritoneum is intact. A complete rupture is where the peritoneum is torn in addition to the endometrium and the myometrium. When hysterorexis occurs in labor, it changes the course of natural childbirth or VBAC to emergency C-section and ceases the mother's ability to give birth without medical in intervention. In areas of the world where there is inadequate medical care, uterine rupture is a life-threatening complication for the mother and baby. Regardless of location, it is very serious and has life-altering consequences for the mother as often for the child as well. Diagnosis and treatment process. A diagnosis of hysterorexis is confirmed during cesarean surgery and is usually suspected when the baby's heart rate drops in labor. If rupture is suspected, the attending physician will urgently deliver the baby via emergency C-section if need be. If the baby is in fetal distress and is not born expeditiously, they may suffer permanent brain damage, problems due to lack of oxygen, or death. Uterine rupture is surgically repaired after the delivery. Future deliveries with a history of hysterorexis will be closely and extremely monitored. Will be extremely closely monitored if the mother wishes to attempt a VBAC vaginal birth after cesarean and meets the requirements that indicate a successful outcome. Our fourth condition is cardiomegaly, which means enlargement of the heart. Pathology. causes. These can range from high blood pressure and coronary artery disease to excessive workouts, a lack of exercise, or high blood pressure. When a patient has an enlarged heart, their lungs can't breathe effectively and they may experience shortness of breath or respiratory difficulties. Their brain becomes starved of oxygen and the patients may experience dizziness. Some patients are asymptomatic and don't feel any different. Cardiomegaly occurs when there is damage to the heart muscle and the heart grows bigger to compensate. This works to a point until the heart is decreasingly able to effectively circulate blood throughout the body. Diagnosis and treatment. Cardiomegaly may be discovered when you and your doctor discuss symptoms of congestive heart failure or it could be discovered when you're tested for something else. You can see heart enlargement on an x-ray, such as the x-ray above, but the best way to officially diagnose it is to do an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of your heart. It will measure your heart's thickness, size, and pumping functionality. Depending on the cause of cardiomegaly, the patient's provider may recommend medication for the heart, such as diuretics, angiotensin-converting enzyme or ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, ARBs, beta blockers, digoxin, anticoagulants, or antiarrhythmics. Each of these have a different purpose and the provider will prescribe what is necessary to their patient. Treatment continued. If the patient's condition is too advanced for prescription treatment only or they are ineffective, other methods, other methods of treatment are pacemakers that coordinate the two sides of the heart and may also deliver shocks to control abnormal or rapid heartbeats. The patient could require heart valve surgery, coronary bypass, a left ventricular assistant device, or LVAD, or as a last resort, a heart transplant. Of course, these are all medical interventions. The patient will always be encouraged to make applicable lifestyle changes to lessen their condition. These can range from losing weight and taking responsibility for poor nutritional choices to getting good sleep, monitoring blood pressure, and exercising. The patient's cardiologist should be informed of all lifestyle changes before their attempt and will, of course, be there with the patient throughout any surgical process. The patient may also interact with a pharmaceutical representative in conjunction with their general provider or their specialty doctor. When it comes to your heart, don't be a Grinch. Our last condition is blepharoptosis, which means drooping of the eyelid. Pathology. Blepharoptosis is the drooping of the upper eyelid. This is either a bilateral or unilateral condition and may be congenital or acquired, and it happens due to a dysfunction of the eye muscles or the nerves in the eyelid. This condition is able to be reversed with surgery, although as the patient ages, Parts of the eyelid involved become thinner and the wrists are amplified with the procedure. There are different types of blepharoptosis, 
such as myogenic, neurogenic, traumatic, and mechanical. Pathologic drooping of the eye may resolve itself naturally, though often it is fixed through surgery. Associated anatomy. Blepharoptosis affects the eyelids, specifically the Mueller's muscle, orbicularis muscle, and the levator muscle and tendon. Whether or not the ptosis affects each eyelid is determined by the oculomotor, trochlear, and abducent nerves. Effects on the body. When blepharoptosis occurs within the first year of the patient's life, their condition is congenital. Depending on the severity of the condition, they may develop amblyopia, which is where the brain and the eye do not work together as they were designed to do. Unless it is treated early, it could persist into their adulthood. If left unchecked at any age, ptosis can cause astigmatism because of the undue pressure on the affected eye. Diagnosis and treatment. An optometrist will diagnose blepharoptosis by measuring the height of the eyelids and the strength of the eyelid muscles. Congenital blepharoptosis could turn into amblyopia. Common treatments for amblyopia are patching and atropine. Putting an eye patch over the unaffected eye forces the affected eye to strengthen itself to focus better. Atropine comes in the form of eye drops that blur the vision in the unaffected eye to achieve the same effect with the same results. However, the treatment for most cases of ptosis is blepharoplasty, where the excess eyelid skin is removed. Thank you so much.